close, I see that Sonia Curry, Chief Executive of the charity, uh, is going to occupy a slot. And it will be today a lot easier actually to hear what you're going to say, Sandra, because the acoustics last night was certainly not in your favour. <laughs> Sandra is very used to saying thank you to people and extremely good at it. But I just want to say thank you on my behalf and all of our behalves to you because your arrival at this charity has been transformational <coughs> and I mean that entirely in a good way. So over to you, Sandra. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Fiona, for that. Um, I'm actually going to, as you can see from the title up there, share a problem I have with you, which is a wee bit uncommon for me to do, perhaps. And I blame for this topic uh, Patricia, who spoke last year. Patricia Gooden gave our patients talk last year. And for those of you, you that were there might remember she had a singing, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Um, and I think I saw Jeremy taking a break from questions and singing along to Don't Worry, Be Happy in front of me. Um, and of course, I am incredibly happy in my role as chief executive here at Kidney Research UK. I'll say that up front. Um, but also in light of the talk we had this morning from Professor Decker about being totally transparent and telling everything, I do have a lot of worries. So I thought I might share some of those worries today with you, um, and in particular ones that I think you can help me with. So there's Patricia, who's joined us again today. So I'm not going to get you to sing, um, and I promise that I won't do that. So Patricia, as uh, Jim did yesterday, reminded us all why we're here and why we do all of the great things that we've been hearing about. Um, and that's where my worry comes from, that we, every day, day I, I fret a little bit in the office that we're still saying no to some really good research that people and some of you might be in this room are poised to make progress and we're not able to move you into that place where we can say yes you can have the money to do it and that worries me and it, when I come to days like this and hear the fantastic work that people are doing and the fantastic progress that you're making then that just adds to my worry because I think we might have said no to other people who could have been here sharing that progress with us. And the other thing that worries me is that we're still not yet making enough noise about kidney disease in places where that would matter and where we could influence policy and improvements that would benefit not only the science and the research that we want to do but patient care and therefore directly patients, the reason we're all here. So they're the only two worries I'm going to share with you today. I'm going to keep the rest to myself. Um, also with us last night was um, Professor Sir Roy Cowan, who I introduced, hopefully some of you heard that introduction. Um, and when I heard him speaking in Liverpool a few weeks ago, he showed this slide. And he was talking about how he used to get money for his research. And he said, you know, this jolly nice chap from the MRC, the secretary, Sir Harold Hemsworth, came along, had a wee chat, and um, he said, that looks really interesting. I think he said, jolly interesting. Um, I'm going to send you a cheque to cover a few more experiments. Now, I'm not sure if it was that easy then, but he kind of depicted that actually it was. Um, and we know that the world has changed. We're in a much, much more competitive market for us to secure funding that we can give to you and for you to secure funding from us um, and I would really like us to think we could get to the stage where yes there are more steps in place and yes there's a bit more process in place but wouldn't it be nice to think at the back of that if there's some really interesting research that we think is important and valid which I'm sure is what Sir Harold meant then then we can write the cheque and we can say yes and that's where I think your help would, would uh, really have add enormous value. We have much more chance of getting money um, to pass on to you and getting money that directly comes to you if you're helping us with the story that we need to present. So how can you help us do that? So the main focus for us in celebrating the work that you do is bringing your work to life and we've heard some of that today in a very fixed setting where we're sharing with other scientists and researchers 
but we have to do it in a much broader way across a whole spectrum of audiences. And we need your help to write about your research. Some of the presentations today, um, some of our communications team are sitting here, they probably could take that and write it up. But there will be some that I think, I'm looking at, at Pete and Sarah and Alex, you would need a wee bit of help in translating some of that. Um, and it's really important that you give us the time as well as doing the science, that you give us a bit of time to help us talk about it. And that's talk about it in a whole variety of settings. The lay descriptions that we now ask you to do are enormously important. And for those of you that give us a spot on lay description, I think Suzanne's in the audience somewhere. Is Suzanne here? Um, it really excites us, doesn't it? We get one that we think we all know what that means and therefore we can all stand up or write or talk on the radio and, and whoever we're talking to will also know what it means. So translating your science into patient benefit is one thing. Translating the words of your science into language we can use to sell it on and promote it is just invaluable. So examples of how you've helped us with that, with the pioneering past um, flyer that's in your pack um, is, is really helpful. We're taking that into Parliament, all of the parliaments across the UK. We're talking to people who might support us. And the people that helped us write that by describing their science and helping us describe their science um, are, are doing huge benefit to our ability to grow this charity. And then we also need those stories to be matched up with the patient stories. And there's patients in the audience today who've also helped us by giving us how their perspective on what the science means. And if we can match up the research with the outcomes for patients and, how, and the prospects for patients that that changes, that's really, really valuable. So that's one way that I would urge every one of you to think, can I do more to bring my work to you in a way that you can take it out to a wider audience. And then the other thing that we do is put very much to a much wider audience, a real broad audience that we don't necessarily even get to talk to, is the, the many thousands of supporters that we send our update magazine to. So in that, we're, we're capturing people for a few seconds. You know, they, they might skim through, and what's going to make them stop and read that piece? Um, and that's where we need your help. And we've got some expertise in making people stop and read that piece, but we need your help to pick out what are the real highlights of your work that someone will remember when they've put that magazine down and washed up their coffee cup that they've read it with. So other ways that you can help us is by actually coming out and doing some of that talking yourself. Um, and one of the ways that we've had great support from uh, researchers is at legacy receptions. Legacies, money that people leave in their wills for the charity, um, brings in more than £2 million every year for us. And so that translates into a lot of research. So it's really important. And we, we gather a small number of people together and presenters, um, a, a researcher comes along to present. So yes, you talk about your science. Um, here is a picture, he's not actually doing a funny dance there, he's, he's telling the audience where their kidneys are. So, you know, there's some real practical things that people might want to be taken back to the basics on. But the, the real one for me that's important is this engagement here. It's not just about the formal presentation, it's about sitting around the table and answering what does that mean and makes the researcher a real person. Because otherwise there's a, there is the potential that people don't know that, that they think you're some strange being that never... Um, relates to really who they are and of course you do because you're, you're, you're able to do that and it's, that's enormously valuable, the feedback that we get from that. Um, and then there's a different type of communication that we need you to help us with and that's when we ask people to come to um, speak on the media. Again, you're going out to an audience you don't even know who they are, you can't limit them at all. And we've had a a real flurry of requests recently to get people onto the radio, which is great for us because it mentions the charity, it raises the profile. And we asked Charlie Thompson and Lorna both recently to talk about the 100-year-old kidney that um, was seen as the longest-lasting kidney. It was transplanted from someone who was 
uh, of a good age when they gave the kidney and it's lasted for, uh, I'm saying a good age because I can't remember the exact age, um, someone else might prompt me, um, and then it had lasted a long time. So the kidney itself that was in this living woman was, was more than 100 years old, which is fantastic. So we were keen to get in on the back of that to say, yes, that's fine, but it's not the same for everyone. And we heard about that yesterday in the potential lifetime of kidneys. So we wanted to come in with a research angle to say, that's where we want every kidney to last as long as it's needed, and it's not happening. So Charlie did some radio for us. Lorna was fantastic on the radio. I think they then got carried away with themselves asking you about transplants and what was it really like. And, but that was great for us, because you were on there talking as one of our trustees, talking about the need for research and responding to the media's interest in that story. And we get asked on various occasions to talk about different things. Kidney stones was a topic that seemed to excite the media and John Sayre was really helpful on that. And then we had the BBC Lifeline. We wanted to film um, research in action to be put out on television, telling people about our work generally. And we depend on you to help us both present those stories, but also to really engage very, very important audiences. Um, so hopefully some, uh, some others of you in the room might consider, could you be a media spokesperson for us to talk about your research? And sometimes it would be about your research, your specific interest, and that's really important for us to have that portfolio of speakers to call on. And our public affairs work, which is relatively new in the last perhaps two or three years, we've invested much more emphasis in it. Peter Story leads the team that delivers that. And we've been very active, again, in parliaments across the UK. So up in the top corner there is Donald Fraser, who spoke um, brilliantly in Wales at the Welsh Assembly for us. And we had the health minister speaking, um, amongst many others. Um, and lots of patients and, and researchers. And there were researchers there demonstrating in a very visual way some of their work. And that has really now engaged us with the Welsh policymakers, and I'm sure will come to great fruition. We had a, and some of you were there, John Bradley's pictured up here in the top. Um, and Alice, I think your picture's here somewhere, um, in Westminster at the House of Lords. And Lord Sharkey, who chairs the, um, the, uh, uh, Association of Medical Research Charities hosted the event and he said afterwards to me that that had been the best parliamentary reception he's ever been to. He's been going to them for years. And, and I thought, well, he's just saying that. But I met him three months later and he said, you know, that, that reception I came to, to that you ran was the best. And it's because all of the speakers engaged the entire audience and the speakers talking about their research was the thing that people remembered. So it really is enormously important. We also had a family member speaking in this. Um, Mum here was absolutely amazing talking about why research matters to her. But the fact that she was saying that and research was, researchers were standing next to her just brought the whole thing into the right setting. And then a very easy way that everybody, well, anybody who tweets, that is, um, or is on social media can help us is by retweeting, building up the momentum. We have 60,000 followers on Facebook and Twitter, about 40,000 of them are on Twitter. So it's a very important forum for us. And we've got some very important tweeters. Is that what you did? Is that, I was going to say <laughs> Twitter, so that doesn't sound right. It's tweeters. Charlie Thompson is prolific. James Fotheringham is normally here, is prolific. Um, and that all reaches and spreads out to an audience that we can't otherwise get to. So um, if any of you do tweet, please uh, make sure you follow us and log in with us and retweet and comment and put things up for us. That would be fantastic. It, it's becoming an increasingly important part of our public presentation. And if you don't want to sit down and tweet, um, twiddle your fingers with your in tweeting, you can be more active, of course, which is good for us all, as we hear from some of the research that we're funding. Um, and here, Paddy Mark, who I, someone commented on yesterday, um, for the last three years since the Glasgow Bridges Walk has been in existence, Paddy's come along with his family who um, initially were in push chairs and now they toddle the seven miles. Um, and there is uh, Rachel in the middle there um, doing the, I think that's the Chepstow Stampede and you heard from Rachel yesterday. And actually this is one of our industry partners, Cathy Berg from Otsuka, who did the 
so the industry colleagues amongst us today are not um, exempt from this call that I'm putting out to you for help, um, did the 100 mile bike ride that Lorna also did. Um, and then of course when we're out and about at conferences and exhibitions it's very helpful to be seen together as the phrase at the top of, of this column here is and that's two of our researchers um, who were meeting in fact with a, a parent whose child had died um, and she had raised some funds to, that she wanted to then be put into research and it was probably about 20 years on I think um, and, and again that parent was put in touch with us by, the, by Tim Goodship but, but came in through because she wanted to pass it on into research and she didn't know where to start so she had some money but didn't know where to start by directing it into research by coming to talk to the charity we were able to introduce her to the people that could use that money effectively for research and we were able to celebrate and hand over the money and move to the next phase uh, for that particular mum um, of, of doing something to mark her daughter's death. Um, so being out and about, being visible, being visible with any time you're presenting using our logo, which of course I think most of you certainly did today, but that's because we controlled the, uh, the <laughs> slides. But anywhere you are, please make sure we're visible if you can. If, you know, we've got little stickers, you can put them on your lab doors and your clinic doors. Um, it might seem small and you know, not that important, but actually that familiarity then of seeing the charities being a part of everything you do is really important to us. Um, and working with us to create some of the need for funding around Garfield West and um, by working very closely with Sean and the team, we were able to build up together the project that won us a million, half a million pound grant. And previously that funder had said, no, we don't really think we do want to fund you. And we were able to persuade them that actually we did. And not only that, they funded us to significantly more than we'd expected them to. So it's really important to have your support. And it's nice to know that someone's eureka moment, uh, Rupert, uh, who's hopefully still here um, in the brochure today, he realises already, and I, I, I haven't obviously written this since I've been here, um, how important effectively communicating research is. So it's great, Rupert, that you've got it. Let's hope everybody gets it too. Because um, we just can't do what we want to do without your help. So we'd like to help you do that. There's a researcher's handbook, which I think you all... We, we certainly get... It's, it's newly created, so we give it to new people that we're giving grants to. But we thought we'd recirculate it to those of you who've been with us for a while too, because you might find it useful. And I think it was in the packs that were given to everyone. It's on a stick in your pack, so it's not a hard copy. It's in the memory stick in your pack, loaded up. If you do want a hard copy, they'll send it to you. But that gives you hints and tips about how you might be involved in that communication, how to arrange a tour, perhaps, to your uh, lab, etc. because we need you to do it. Also on the USB stick is our brand book. Um, brand might sound very commercial, but it's really important. It's who we are, how people understand us. Um, and that, that information's in there. Again, if you've got any questions when you look at it and about how you might use it and incorporate it into how you talk about us, please do get in touch with any of the team. Their details are also on that stick. Um, and we've had some feedback already about the, um, the, the researchers' welcome pack. We do try to make people feel welcome, supporters and researchers alike, and obviously William there, one of our intercalating students sent us a message saying, yes, I really loved it, and that's good for us. So the final thing I would just like to do is give you another bit of feedback, which I hope just reminds us again why we're all here. So one of it, we do say thank you, as Fiona said at the beginning, a lot. One of our supporters had sent us some money. We sent her a note saying thank you, and also asked, because it's helpful to us to say, could you tell us a little bit about why you made this donation? Because she hadn't told us. So I'll just give you a little synopsis of her letter. She thanked us for the letter we'd sent. She thought we were very kind. Um, and she told us that her mother had died um, after she'd had a significant decline in her health in August 2014. I was with her as she embarked on a number of appointments with a number of specialists to find out what was wrong, and we used to call it consultant bingo. We heard a wee bit about that yesterday too, didn't we, about too many doctors? Because she saw so many different specialists. I used to tell her she was making a good run for a full house. 
Um, so very quickly, this lady was diagnosed with chronic kidney disease, unfortunately already too late. And again, we heard lots of comments yesterday about how can we bring that um, diagnosis forward earlier. And there was no surgical uh, option available to her. She was treated in Brighton, where the team were marvellous. Um, very quickly, she had tablets, iron infusions, etc. And the daughter goes on to describe it. And she said that the hospital team did their best but her mother died in April 2015. So when it came to December and Christmas that year, she realised in her letter, she tells us, she couldn't do Christmas. It would have been her first one without her mum. And mum had been so much a part, obviously, of her life. Um, and she wanted to pay her back. So she decided that as she couldn't do Christmas, everything she used to spend on those festivities would go to the charity. So every nectar point, every penny spent on wrapping paper, crackers, cars, after eights, which she describes as something left over as a family favourite from the 70s. I don't know, I just yeah, thought they, would all, they were always there. Um, all of that money was going to go to charity and it seemed fitting that all this money, which wasn't ever going to get her what she really wanted for Christmas, which was her mum um, laughing at her as she wrestled with the turkey, she wanted that money to raise two fingers to kidney disease in the process. And that's how we ended up with the money. And she concluded her letter to us saying, I know you will make good use of the money. I'm pleased it's with you. Yours sincerely, Lucy Butner. So we want to increase, and the reason I'm asking for your help is we really want to increase our ability to give you more money so that I can use those exact same words and say, I know you'll make good use of the money and I'm pleased it's with you. So I hope that everybody when you leave today thinks, is there something more I can do to stop Sandra worrying? I'm sure I'm not the only one that worries. I think we all worry in the team um, because there will be. However, some of you do fantastic things for us and give us a huge amount of time. But there will, for those of you that don't yet do that, let's hope you think you can. And there will be something else every one of you can do that helps us make more money, grow the organisation, fund more research, and have more people being pleased that our money is being put to good use. So thank you for listening today. Sorry I've run over a wee bit, um, and I hope that um, we can work more closely in future.